Hey guys, how's it going? Jehu here from Rancho Cucamonga, California with a little update on my electric build. As you guys know, um, I've been working on this car for a while. Um, it started in December of last year. Um, and I've been putting a bunch of hours into this project. But it was mostly uh, working on the car itself into uh, kind of a restoration. It was really not a restoration it was more like a conversion from one type of a car to another so um, really here this car has been through two conversions it's uh, it's uh, the conversion to make it into another car and then the electric conversion when I found out about Evcon I made it a goal of mine to do whatever I could to try and make it there so I really didn't have a lot of time to spend in the electric conversion part of my project. Um, I had to just kind of put it together to be in, done in time for EFCON. So what ended up happening was that I didn't really fabricate anything on the electric side. Um, I did fabricate a bunch of stuff on the metal side, you know, I, I welded windows and I fabricated the bulkheads and a bunch of other stuff. But uh, when it comes to the electric part of it, I really didn't have any time. I had to kind of just put it together and uh, that might be, you know, some of you might be wondering why my batteries don't have any boxes and why uh, my controller is kind of just hanging there with a couple bolts and it's just really not installed properly. Um, I don't have a cooling system yet. Um, I barely got enough time to actually install a working charger in there. so. I, I mean, I charged my batteries for the first time um, and the night before we took off to Missouri. Um, now, with Evcon behind us, then all the fabrication starts. Um, there's a bunch of things that have to be made for this conversion to be a proper one. Um, and um, I've started some of those and I'd like to show you here uh, what I've been doing in the last few days. Here we are in the back of my car. Um, and here's a, what you might notice that's a little bit different. Um, I have been able to fabricate these two little shields that go um, in this hole, what used to be a hole here. The uh, original engine of this car was a lot bigger than this motor, so there was a lot of space that had to be filled with, with something. Um, so in this case, I just fabricated two L shapes of, uh, you know, 16 inch aluminum. Um, I just kind of bend them and cut them to fit into space here. Um, this is where I'm going to start using or installing the uh, cooling system. As you can see here, I have a couple of fans and I have a heat exchanger on the bottom and I have a, a, a bottled water uh, reservoir here so that the cooling system, uh, I can fill the cooling system there easily. Um, I use these gland nuts in here to put the... Uh, the hoses and by the way uh, Jack I did uh, listen to you this time and I went ahead and bought and uh, order a bunch of these AN6 uh, fittings and the uh, braided hoses and stuff so that I can have a proper uh, non-leaky water system here are the two hoses that are gonna be cooling the controller um, um, you saw last update where I went to EV West and I bought their chill plate which is a nice exact fit of the Curtis controller so it makes for a nice neat installation there. Um, so these two hoses are going to go down and then they're going to connect into the rest of the system. I also have to run two more hoses out of this system so they can go into my charger. Um, if I am able to run enough cooling through my charger, um, I will be able to charge at 12 kilowatts. Uh, uh, so that would be about an hour and a half for my, you know, I, I think I have a 22 kilowatt pack. Um, if it was completely drained for some reason, I'd be able to do it about about two hours, a little bit less than two hours. Um, I have to figure out the whole, my service to be able to put big enough breakers in there to be able to support that. But of course, all of that can't happen until I have uh, proper cooling for both uh, the controller and the charger. Um, and I'm just gonna put them in the same system and basically the system is gonna be almost running all the time when the car is running and when the car is charging, the cooling system is just gonna be 
running. Um, so that's what I've been fabricating in the last uh, couple of days. So the next part that I'll need to fabricate here is gonna be some kind of stand to secure the uh, Curtis controller. Um, right now, it's kind of just dangling in there and uh, it's not really properly secured. Um, I was kind of thinking about what, how I was gonna secure that to the motor or to the transmission mount or something. And um, I had some ideas. Um, and then I kind of seen what everybody else is doing there. I got to see what uh, uh, the guys out there at EV West did, and I kind of liked that idea what they did. Where it was just a, uh, it's just a shelf really that came and attached to the back two bolts. Uh, the, these two bolts are half inch thirteen threaded uh, holes in here in the back, and then we have the ones that mount to the the motor plate to the transmission. Um, so I'm designing my own version of that plate and um, um, I'm doing a little bit different. I think uh, I'm going to end up running these cables for the motor right straight down into that shelf. Uh, I'm going to use three of these gland nuts also and they're going to be running here. It's going to make it nice and neat and uh, I'm really going for uh, aesthetically. I want to be kind of symmetrical with this thing so that uh, everything there's symmetry in, in the installation. One of the things that I've been scratching my head on to how to figure it out is, uh, for some reason, um, high-performance electric vehicles, they've decided to put this terminal block here on their motors at 45 degrees from center. Um, and that's gonna be kind of weird because then the, my cables have to come down and then they have to go in there. We'll figure it out. but. My aim is to try and, and make it look symmetrical. Um, it would be great if this thing was right on top here, or if I was able to put the, the terminal bolts right there uh, on top. I'm using a, a, a CAD program uh, in which I can, you know, design it and, and draw it all up in 3D and then um, I'm able to order it and in a few weeks or in a month I think yeah, the parts should be able to come. Um, I'm trying to design uh, uh, the part so that it has some surface here to put some branding you know it'd be cool to be able to put a you know like EVTV in there or something. Uh, another one of the parts that I'm gonna have to make is gonna be Eventually, somehow to protect all these batteries, there's a lot of exposed terminals and connections, high voltage connections, yeah, 120 volts, um, exposed here in my system. And I somehow want to be able to uh, cover those up so that, you know, that I accidentally don't touch it and electrocute myself and stuff. Or, or someone else, if I ever take this car to a show or something, I, don't, I can't have one, a kid, you know, crawl in here and start touching stuff and, you know into trouble. Another really cool thing that I want to do is uh, the charger. The charger has a nice little screen that tells you exactly what's happening in the charger. It tells you what this duty cycle is doing, it tells you how many amps are, are it's pulling out of the wall, how many amps is pushing into the batteries, it, it tells you what the temperature is, the inside temperature of the charger, um, it tells you the elapsed time from the time, you know, from when you start charging and stuff. There's a bunch of stuff that information that it's uh, that is useful to have, and it has a nice little screen. The problem is that it's hidden under there. So if I ever want to check, for example, how many amps uh, it's, it are going into my battery or how long I, I've been charging, I have to kind of open this thing up or crawl in here. You kind of look through the holes and cracks and then try to see what the charger says you know that's really not um, the best way to do it so what I want to do I want to take that little screen I can separate this screen right here with a couple of cables and stuff and here's the the gas port um, of my car um, it's actually pretty big I can fit you know my whole hand in there and stuff um, I either I'm either gonna eventually install here a um, J1772 plug in here or um, I'm thinking of actually milling out of aluminum a, uh, a port that is compatible with the Tesla Model S um, charging connector um, just so that I'm ready uh, so that when um, 
that becomes the standard, then I'm ready to just pull up into any Tesla supercharger and I can charge my car. Anyway, so, so that's another one of the projects that I'm gonna do um, and that it's gonna happen here. So that was last week. What has been going on this week? Well, this week's actually been pretty interesting. Um, finally finished my uh, cooling system. Um, I installed all the A and six fittings and all the uh, hoses. Um, I ended up using uh, two pumps to get going because one of them just did not have enough uh, power to keep the pressure required in the system to keep the water flow. Um, my design, I have my, my chargers kind of high up in the system, you know, the, the rest of it is down here and so the water has to go all the way up there. And it's kind of challenging for the water pump, but I finally figured out and it's working. Um, I was able to connect my charger to 240. Um, I have a dryer uh, plug here in my garage, so I just use that and it's got two uh, 30 amp breakers on it. So. I was able to put really about 50 amps into the, the battery uh, without tripping the breaker. Um, at 60 amps, then it would uh, it would trip it. So 60 amps out of 120, I think it equals to like seven and a half kilowatts or something. So I got to charge uh, my battery rather quickly. Um, the next project is going to go and get some, you know, uh, some 80 um, amp circuits and put them in my panel here, which is you know, five feet away from from my charging port here in my garage. So I have a 12 gauge extension cord that I was using to charge and uh, it was getting quite warm. So what I ended up was buying some uh, six gauge cable and I'm just gonna be making my own little cable. It will be able to handle uh, six gauge, you know. This thing will handle 100 amps through it, I think, uh, no problem. I'll be ready for put in here, you know, 20 kilowatts into my battery pack whenever that's done. The beauty about uh, this, this charger, the open source charger, the only thing holding it back from really putting uh, energy into the battery is what their service can provide. If, if you can put 100 amp breakers in there, uh, then you can pump that much current into your battery. The other a thing that will hold your your charger down is going to be the temperature so you gotta keep it cool and as more power is going through it uh, and you put more demand in the little igvt that it's got inside then it gets a little bit more challenging to keep it cool so it's gonna be interesting to start doing some tests and see how far we can push this little charger and um you know uh Valerie's been, uh, I done, I've seen some tests where he's pushing these things, you know, into the 15 kilowatt. Uh, he's got one that is uh, 30 kilowatts that it's for high voltage batteries. It's like for 300 volt plus ba battery packs, which, you know, I have 120 volts, so that wouldn't work for me. But um, uh, we're, you know, we're, we're starting to definitely see some high uh, current chargers uh, available on the open source. Uh, platform and uh, I'm definitely going to be playing with mine and see how far I can push it and see how my batteries will handle you know the high current uh, charging and stuff so that's what's happening the other thing is I was able to go down the freeway now and keep my controller down um, around 65 70 uh, degrees centigrade so you know I, I I was running into problems where it was overheating after about 20 miles um, on highways, roads. This weekend was Fall Octo Show. Uh, it's like Orange County Transporter Owners Octo. You know, it's a bunch of, it's a show where it's only for Sambas. It's only 50 to 67 uh, BW Transporter Sambas. Um, so it's exactly 50 miles away from my house. Um, and just my estimation, I have uh, about a 22 kilowatt hour battery. Uh, just driving around, I'm thinking that my range is about 50 miles. Um, so what we ended up deciding to do was tow the car there in the morning and then um, exhibit it in the show and do you know the whole things that we do. Um, 
and then drive it back. And, and that's what we did. Uh, it did pretty good. Uh, it drove back to 50 miles. Of course, uh, like in mile 40 or something, it, it overheated. And I was uh, forced to come the last 10 miles in the streets instead of the highway. But once I got here, uh, I actually still had some juice left in my battery. So I decided to just go around my neighborhood until deplete, so I could deplete the battery. Uh, I went another 50 miles. So it gave me a total of 65 miles on that charge. So um, it was, you know, good news is that the battery... Uh, uh, it's it's healthy and uh, it was able to take in 188 amps amp hours um, out of the 180 uh, rating that it has so it's got a little bit more so, some things that I can still do like I can put all the windows in this thing it's probably gonna increase uh, the range a little bit because it's gonna decrease some of the drag um, I noticed that my tires run a little bit on the warm side uh, so I'm thinking that I, I might have to take it and to be better aligned. I actually put this thing together myself and I never took it to be properly aligned. Uh, that might uh, decrease some drag or some, uh, it will give me a little bit of range too, that's what I'm hoping. Um, so that's what's happening uh, with this guy. Also yesterday, it was pretty eventful. Um, I got to learn my lesson uh, the hard way I get it once more. Um, I should have listened to Jack and got some of the uh, Norlock washers and all my battery straps because I had a loose connection in my uh, contactor, my main contactor, and that created uh, an immense amount of heat which it was starting to melt the contactor and weld it shut. But it welded shut not because there was an inrush current in there. It, it, it just, I think, mechanically failed. Uh, and so the controller gave me error 38. Code 38, yeah. Um, I'm scratching my head trying to figure out what it is, you know. Uh, I go over there and looked at it and yeah, it looks pretty charred up. Uh, I was, uh, you know, and the, the one terminal is loose. Um, so what ended up happening is that I took it off out there and just kind of banged it around and it, it was able to disconnect. I checked uh, continuity on it and, and it, was, it was broken. Put it back in and it worked for a little bit. I was able to drive back a few miles um, until I got code 39. Google, Google 39, you know, code 39. I realized that it was the main contactor to have failed and it's not engaging. What I had to do was kind of jerry rig, just kind of connect my controller directly just to get home. Um, I had to time it because the, con the controller basically goes through these little steps where it pre-charges and then at a set point it engages the main contactor. Um, so I had to play around, uh, had someone turn the key on and then once I heard the contactor click, then I, I had to like manually connect the, the uh, my cable um, uh, bridging the uh, the contactor just so I can get home and that's uh, I took a few tries and it would keep giving me code 39 um, but eventually we we managed to, to do it on a timely thing and I tightened the screw and I was able to get home um, I have ordered a uh, contactor from EVTV uh, and I also took the uh, opportunity to order the uh, uh, the power brake uh, transducer, uh, hydraulic transducer, so that I can uh, connect it to my uh, controller, and I'll be able to, you know, regen a little bit more with my brakes as I'm stepping on the on the brakes and stuff. Uh, so that is the update for this week it's been pretty eventful uh i charged my battery last night and it seems like capacity is increasing i was able to put 196 amps this time I, i'm it seems like uh, capacity is growing i don't know um what's going on there i am i am really under 35 cycles i think on the battery so I don't know, if, uh, I've, I've read somewhere that the cap battery usually capacity grows uh, for the first few cycles. I just don't know how 
what few means if it means five the first five cycles or the first 35 cycles i don't know so we're gonna definitely keep an eye on that and and see how my battery is performing all right so this is uh, the update this week i hope you guys are all having fun with your own projects and um, keep on plugging away all right bye lost our wheel right here.